Hi, good morning and welcome to today's wonderful service. And I'm glad that you have chosen to join us today. We find Christian. I am sure the Holy Spirit will teach us together and we're gonna be blessed. Karibuni sana. Please make sure that you share this video and you do a watch party. And now take your notebook, your pen, and your Bible. Sit still and enjoy the blessings of the Father in His presence. Asanteni sana. Karibuni. Thank you very much for being with us today. I want to welcome you wherever you are watching us from. Those who are online and those that are in the sanctuary, I take this moment and opportunity to sincerely welcome you and thank you for being with us. Today's service, the Lord is indeed with us and is speaking to us in a very special way. So let us pray together as we continue with the service. In Jesus' name, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for who you are. We are thankful, Lord, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your love. Lord, we are so grateful that indeed you have given us life and life in abundance through Christ Jesus. We thank you that you are our Father. And as we are gathered in your presence, some watching us online and others right here with me in the sanctuary, we glorify your name, Abba Father, because indeed you are ministering unto our heart in a very special way. The service is released over because it's not about me, it's about you, Abba Father. I say thank you, Holy Spirit, as you take charge over the sharing that we are having this day. We thank you and we glorify your holy name because our lives are not going to be the same again. This is a transformative message because Lord you are speaking to our lives that we be what you wanted us to be and how you want us to live all for your glory even as we prepare for the return of Christ Jesus we want to be ready for you the bridegroom Jesus Christ our savior and so as we surrender unto you we allow you to speak to us spirit of God I'm submitted Holy Spirit as a vessel have your way and glorify the father in the name of Jesus. I pray for every listener. Let it be that the spirit of the living God will minister to every heart in a very unique way. And your name will be glorified forevermore. This is a word planted on a ground that is fertile. A soil that is fertile. And it will bear fruits. Fruits that will last. So we thank you Father because indeed you are with us. In Jesus mighty name and with thanksgiving I know we believe it so we say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. This morning I am so excited as we continue to fellowship together with the word that the Lord has been speaking to our lives. When you see the Father speaking something one time and again, there is an emphasis. There is something that he wants to plant in our lives and it is for our good. He wants us to be what he called us to be. He wants us to do what he wants us to accomplish on the face of the earth. The Father would want every one of us not to just live, you know. Kuna watu wanasema, kuishi tu, you know, kukula, kulala, kulandalanda. That's not why we are called by the Lord. We are alive for a reason. And that's why the Father has been speaking to us about being a Christian with a difference. Being a Christian who has defined their start in God, who has given a new meaning to their relationship with God. Siyo mkristo tu wa kawaida, asibiwe buwana yesu. It's not about an ordinary Christian. It cannot be business as usual. And at the time that we are in, I said last Sunday that the time has come that every Christian sits back Check and examine the self, re-examining the self, asking questions as, how do I walk with my God? What is my relationship with the one who created me? It's not about many people. It's not even about your pastor. It's not even about who sees you and doesn't see you. It is a personal meeting with your God where you are asking, how is my relationship with my God? That's why I'm saying, everyone who will do this, shall be therefore called a redeemed 
redefined Christian. It's a Christian who has redefined their position in God. It's a Christian who has purposefully said, I'm going to have Jesus than anything. Hallelujah and glory to God. Just for the sake of those that were not in the other Sunday, I say it is time to give a new meaning to the life that we live as Christian believers. Praise be to God. And I told you a, a brief testimony where one time I told God, God, just reformat my life like a computer. Because things were really stuck. I said, Father, reformat my life. I said, Lord, like a car inchi, you know, overhaul my life. Restart it again so that I fit in your plan and in your purpose. From that moment, my life become, became interesting. I started realizing the joy of having a daily walk with the Lord, singing just a closer walk with me. Granted, Lord Jesus is my play, plea. Praise be to the living God. And so at the time that we are in, as brethren, it is important to know that even though there has been a long time when we were at home, the Father wanted every one of us to recheck on their lives and to start to say, I want to be who God called me to be. I want to do what he wants me to do for the glory and honor of his name. These things that are down here are so temporary. What is lasting is what is in heaven. So I'm going to put my treasures in heaven where there is everlasting life, where I will live eternally. Praise be to the living God. Time came when we seemingly were so much concentrated on the things of the world. Many people who are so concerned of how many clothes do I have? How many shoes do I have? And I said that did not count. We have stayed home for quite a while from March up to August, early August. And I can say this while we were at home. Even if you, are, you had a hundred pairs of pairs of shoes, it did not become important. It did not help. Because why are you wearing them to go away? Even if you had trillions of clothes, it was not of importance. You know, even if you had cars all over your parkings, it didn't point they make no meaning. Where were you going? So this has been a time for us to reflect on our lives and ask, what is the meaning of life? Like the Ecclesiastes would ask, what is the meaning of life? Praise be to the living God. And the moment we get that meaning, we will not say meaningless, meaningless. We will say we are living a purposeful life in our God and with our God. Hallelujah and glory to God. So a redefined Christian, that's the one that I'm looking at again. We are going on with that topic of redefined Christian. We say this is the Christian who will make sure, hallelujah, that they are living in a very wise way. Every day asking God, what is your will today that I may fit in it? And I said that was Ephesians 5.15. What is God's will for me every day, every week, every month, so that I do it? Praise God. You can refer back to the notes when, when you have time or you refer to that clip for last Sunday. Again, we, we say to ourselves that this is a Christian, Christian who seeks things that are above. Because that's where the Lord has allowed us to reign with him in God. So it is only important to focus on things that are above, things that are a concern to the heart of the Father. And we refer to Colossians chapter 3 and it was verse 12. Glory to God. Those who are in the church, they remember. I'm only doing a recap for this, those who are not watched the message or who are not in the service. Again, we said the redefined Christian does not concentrate on things that have passed on the history. You forget the past, you press on to the mark of Christ Jesus where he has put for you a mark of your victory in Christ himself. That we looked at Philippians 3 at 13 to 14. Praise the Lord God Almighty. We also said that the redefined Christian, the one that has re-examined themselves and the purpose that I want to have made up my mind and not turning back because I want to see my Jesus someday. That is the divine Christian who has purposed to deny themselves, take up the cross of Jesus Christ and follow and keep on falling. And we say that was from Luke 9 23 
on once. Buana asibiwe sana. I hope those who are not uh, with us last Sunday have been able to connect to what we are talking about because today we continue to see whether the Lord will allow us to conclude this message and I'm sure he wants us to praise the Lord. So we are talking about that redefined Christian or that Christian who has already agreed that their lives are not going to be the same again. Their work with the Lord shall never be the same again. That's the Christian we are talking about. And that's you and me. Because from today after this message, these are things that are going to guide us in our walk with the Lord. Hallelujah and glory to the living God. So today, as we continue with the service of today, we want to start to continue with the next step of this redefined Christian. The redefined Christian, you and me, who has purpose and not going to be the same again, is the one who says, I want to dwell in the presence of the living God. I will stay right there in the presence of God. That Christian today will be the victorious Christian. That is the Christian that will have an extraordinary encounter with the living God. Why? Because when you are in the presence of the living God, you have his fullness through your life. Praise be to the living God. His fullness upon your life, in your life, and through you. And any mountain that comes across the presence of the Lord in you bows down in Jesus' name. So we are talking about that redefined Christian, the Christian who agrees that I must have the presence of the Lord with me than anything else. Hallelujah. Allow me to say a few words in Kiswahili. Nasema kuhusu mukristo aliyo fafanuliwa maisha yake upya unafafanua maisha yako upya na ukaamua mimi sirudi kuwa vile tena la plasma nikamilishe mapenzi ya baba lazima nimfurahishe aliye niumba lazima niwekae nikitazamia yale aliyonileta duniani nikayafanye bwana yesu asibiwe sana lazima nimwakilishe na njia yenye inayofaa katika jina takatifu la yesu kristo kwa hivyo mkristo mwenye aliyochukua nafasi yake akawa amechukua nafasi na akajitazama akasema mimi sitarudi kuwa vile tena uanga anakaa katika uwepo wake Bwana Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana Psalm 16 and verse 11 if we can start there Saburi 16 mlango wa 11 na tunaangalia Daudi vile alisema that in his presence that Christian who will say I will be in his presence 24 7 I will not stay away from his presence I will have my God all the time I will be sensitive to the spirit of the living God that is the Christian who knows that the presence of the Lord has the benefit of the fullness of joy amen so Psalm 16 verse 11 the Bible says this is David who is talking about the dwelling in the presence of God and that it divides Christian staying in the presence of God always. That will show me the path of life. That is David saying, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I say again the second verse particularly. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Brethren, in the times that we are in, hallelujah, I'm here to submit to us that we must make a deliberate, deliberate choice to forever stay in the presence of God. Whatever makes me and you to stay in his presence, that we must do. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. I'm speaking to us, I'm speaking to myself and those watching us online. That time has come as a Christian who understands their position in God, never to be far from God, never to allow anything that can detach you from God. Because once you are in this presence, for sure, there is going to be a signal, a symbol of this joy in the inside of you. When everyone else is crying, because of the economy, because of the surrounding circumstances, maybe of the, of the sickness and the pestilence that are all over the world, you'll be out with 
with the joy and they'll be wondering, how come you, you are full of joy? You know it is purely because you have learned the secret of being a divine Christian, dwelling in his presence. Amen. They sing a song and say, I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship you from afar. Draw me close to where you are. I want to be where you are. You're not dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence. That's where I always want to be. Hallelujah. Brethren, time has come that we've got to say, Father, I cannot stay one second away from your presence. If it is about the thoughts, that are diverting you, and you start thinking things that are contrary to what God has said and who God is. It is time to speak to those thoughts and say, you thoughts that are contrary to God's will, and you cause me to be hidden from the presence of the Lord. I rebuke you, I denounce you, I refuse you, and you replace those thoughts with the word of God. You start confessing and saying, I am what God says I am. You continue to speak the blessings of the living God. And by so doing, you will be in his presence. Always praise the Lord. Again, dwelling in your in his presence requires that you take this one. I'll come back to it at again another time. And I'm saying this, that a Christian who is victorious in the times that we are in, stays in the presence of God. And if you can sense in any manner that there is an action that you have done, that it detaches you from experiencing the goodness of his presence, if it is sin, run to the mercy seat before it is too late. Repent of every sin and tell Lord, sanctify, consecrate me, make me stand right with you. Stay in the righteousness of God because that is what will make you stay in the presence of the Lord. The Lord has seen. Praise God. So I'm saying this. In the time that we are in, we must make sure that the Spirit of the Lord is helping us to walk with the Lord. He is leading the way and we are following. And as we follow him, we are moving in his path. Like David would say, show me your path praise the Lord, because in your presence there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah, glory to God. I do not know whom I'm talking to, but I'm here speaking to us and saying that the Christian that is going to be victorious in the times that we are in will say there is nothing that matters much more than being with the Lord. Amen. If it means detaching yourself from some relationships, some companies of some friends who deny you the dwelling in his presence, learn to say bye-bye. If they are not coming closer to God, it is okay to be alone with God, but in his presence. Hallelujah. One as if you were sad. I'm talking about a divine Christian that will understand that indeed you cannot you are a Christian in our time and a real Christian until you have the presence of the Lord with you. Buana Yesu as if you were son. In the presence of the Lord, it is the real place to be. You know, I know I, I have heard slogans, this is the place to be. But I'm here studying in this altar to say, in the presence of the Lord, it is the place to be. It is the place to remain. Remain there. You will never regret. Even your children will live saying that because we stay in the presence of God, in our home, the Lord himself has preserved us. So as a redefined Christian, stay in the presence of God. Let us look at Psalm 84, verse 10. I may not be able to teach so much about the presence of God. I'm picking a few verses that are just going to help us know how to dwell in the presence of the living God. As a redefined Christian, stay in his presence for his glory. Hallelujah. And this is what David said. That for a day in thy courts, I know you are there, and I told you to pick your Bible and your notebook. Sit still because the word is sweet. Amen. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I tell you, when David was speaking this, he knew, I would rather be one day 
just right there than a thousand days in a wicked place or with wicked people because he is saying it is much better by far. And here I had and say, I would rather stay forever, not just one day, in the course of my father, not anywhere away from him. Amen. The rest I will give you so that you can read from home. Acts chapter 17, 28. A redefined Christian has learned to dwell in the Lord. And, the, and you know, the Bible talks about in him we live. So allow your being to live in him. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. That is the Christian who knows that they have the presence of the Lord. You cannot allow yourself to go to any other place where there is no presence of God. You cannot allow that. Amen. The Christian who is redefined and wants to stay in the presence of the Lord is never in a hurry to leave his presence. Ecclesiastics 83, you can read at your time. Ecclesiastic 83, the Bible says, never be in a hurry to leave his presence. You can read that at your own time. So when you start to pray or to praise or to read at the word of God, don't always trouble your mind with those other things. Concentrate until you hear what the Father is speaking to us. A Christian who dwells in his presence celebrates the blessings of Psalm 91 because that is the place where you are dwelling under the shelter and the shadow of the Almighty. Glory to the Almighty God. Praise be to the living God. A Christian who is redefined and is staying in the presence of God cannot allow themselves to be separated by from God by anything. That is the one who dwells in his presence. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 35 talks about things that can easily separate somebody from the Lord, from his presence. And me am here to say, a divine Christian will be watchful that none of these things shall separate us from the love of God. And so when Paul was writing, he was asked, asking, Shall tribulation, is it tribulation that will separate us from God? Have you faced tri tribulation? Let it not separate you from God. Is it distress? Is it nakedness? Is it peril like the COVID-19? Is it the sword? What is it that shall separate you from the love of God? So my dear brother and sister, time is now that we make a determination that in, the, in his presence, I shall do it. Why am I emphasizing on this? Because when you are a divine Christian and you agree to stay in the presence of God, the Lord himself will defend you. He will fight for you generously in the name of Jesus Christ. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves right deep in the fire, you may not be in the literal fire that is seven times hot, but you could be in a situation in your life that seems like seven times hot. Maybe your marriage is seemingly like seven times hot. Maybe your business is seemingly seven times hot. You are feeling the fire. Maybe it is your workplace. You are feeling the heat. You know, seven times hot. You know, the same God who sent the fourth man to be right there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent the fourth man for your sake right where you are. In Jesus' mighty name, the condition is only remain in his presence. Because when you are in his presence, even when you are thrown in that fire furnace, the Lord will never leave you right there. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. That's why the redefined Christian is the overcoming Christian. And that's why the redefined Christian is glorifying God in the times that we are in. Because after these three men came out of the fire, the king said, no other God is to be worshipped but the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Brethren, what is it that I'm saying today? Stay in his presence in his presence, you have your victory. In his presence, you glorify God. In his presence, you receive your promotion. Stay in his presence as an undefined Christian. Praise be to the living God. Again, the same God. When Daniel was thrown down, you know, into the den of lions, he shut the mouth of the lions. Praise be to the living God. 
You could be somewhere and you are feeling like persecution is all over. This one is saying this, this one is saying this. And we are to pronounce unto us that when we are a divine Christian and we are saying, Lord, in your presence I stay with worshiping you, reading your word, walking with you, pleasing you, listening to you, calling on your name. That is the divine Christian who is in the presence of the Lord and is so determined never to stay away from where God wants you to be in Jesus' name. You will never regret it in the name of Jesus. At your time, you look at it. It's what in Isaiah 43, 2, when you are home. And it is when Isaiah, the Lord is assuring us, even when there is the flood, it will not sweep you. Even when there is the fire, it will not uh, destroy you. It will not consume you. Why? Because you have the one. You are with the one who is above the fire and above the flood. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Bwana Yesu as if you were son. And therefore saying to us, be encouraged to stay a believer, a Christian believer who is determined to have the presence of God with you. Praise be to God. And you can tell when you're not with God. You can tell it when you throw yourself away from God. God never leaves us. It is us, like the prodigal son, who decide to choose a different path. And the father waits for you to come back. But why should you wait? You go summer and eat with the pigs. Time has come to say, I cannot leave the presence of God for anything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you know Paul and Sarah? Even the moment that there was a lot of persecution to the level of being in prison, they continued to praise the Lord. And while in the prison praising the Lord, the prison doors open. So when you stay in the presence of God, the Father will fight your battles. You don't need to fight them. He will do it for you. He will send you help from his sanctuary. That is Psalm 20. You can write that and read at your time. So when you choose, I'm not going to exchange my position in God. I am not going to allow any friendship to destroy my relationship with God. I am not going to allow anybody to deny me my opportunity to pray. I am not going to allow anything to throw me out of where God is. That is where you start to experience indeed his presence. And he started by saying, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. We are talking about a redefined Christian who is able to identify moments of being in the presence of God and choosing to remain in his presence. In his presence. Amen. In his presence, you have victory. In his presence, your battles are fought. In his presence, you have hope. In his presence, you have joy. In his presence, there is provision. In his presence, the Lord is glorified. Stay there, the divine Christian. Stay put. One as if you were son. Let it be when Jesus comes back for us. He will look at you and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. One as if you were son. It's my prayer that nothing will remove us from the presence of God. That is the divine Christian. Hallelujah and glory to God. Hallelujah. The divine Christian remains forever abiding in Jesus Christ. Yes, the last Sunday, those who are in the second service, we talked about John 15. Abiding in the Lord, allowing His one to be in us, and allowing ourselves to bear fruits all here loud, round. Praise be to the living God. So I'm here to encourage somebody that the moment you choose to be in the presence of the living God, it's not in vain. Hallelujah. You will be a Christian who bears fruits. Why? Because you are attached to the branch that is the source of your life, that will cause you to experience fruitfulness all throughout your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is the redefined Christian. I'm sure we are getting blessed right where you are in your homes or wherever you are watching us from and even those that are in sanctuary because what we are talking about is a Christian that has a difference in the times that we are in. It's no business as usual. We have re we examined ourselves and we are saying no, we must give a new meaning to the way we have walked with our God. It must be different. God will not have allowed us to stay home those many months just for nothing. It was a 
allowing you and me to check our stand in God, our position in Him, to realign ourselves, even to realign the way we have been working in church. Praise God. Even in our government, in everything, even in our family, the Lord was giving us an opportunity that we reset, we get reset, so that we align to Him for the preparation of the return of Jesus Christ. Brethren, we can't take ourselves to where we were before. Our walk with God will be taken so seriously, not by anyone else, but by I and God, you and God. Praise be to the living God. And we just said that dwelling in the presence of God as a divine Christian. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Moving forward, the redefined Christian, a Christian who has purpose to be who God wanted, wants them to be, lives by faith. Amen? Amen? We are in a time where every believer, every Christian believer must walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. I know there are many people who have testimonies and we are choosing to have one of the Sundays afternoon service if you'll be testifying of God's goodness because I know there are people who have walked a journey over the months that we are not meeting together and you have heaps and heaps of testimonies. We'll be sharing that because it's a way of glorifying God. So what is it that I'm saying? That a redefined Christian, a Christian that has re-examined their life and has chosen to walk with God in the way God wants them to. Praise be to the living God. Is the kind of Christian that will say, I am living by faith. Praise be to God. And not by sight. If you stand that age, you can check that at home. Every moment when you wake up, remind yourself, it is not what I am seeing with my eyes. If you have two shillings or five shillings, let that not put you down. Start to confess and to proclaim, I am rich in Christ. The Lord will send me destiny help. This somebody who shall come my way and my business shall thrive. I am not defined by five shillings, neither by ten shillings. For I live by faith and not by sight in the name of Jesus Christ. When you wake up in the morning and you notice in your life that you are having a sickness, even if it's a headache, let it not define you. Pick what the word of the Lord has said. Let the sick say, I am healed because of the work the Lord has done for me. Praise be to the living God. The redefined Christian in the times that we are in will live by faith and not by sight because the just shall live by faith, not by sight. Amen? Amen. If God can feed the birds of the air and they do not wake up to go to work like you and me, how much more shall he feed you? You are of more value to him. Praise God. If the Lord can clothe the flowers that are on the field, how much more is he going to clothe you and me? Praise God. We worry so much about what will happen when schools open on 2021. That 2021, it has enough cares for itself. What is important is get concerned with what matters to God now and you'll be concerned with what concerns you. Amen? Amen. You'll be busy doing what concerns, concerns you. So they just live by faith. We are living by faith in our times. If you want to live with the money that, by the money that is in your account, my friend, the moment that there is zero or negative because you have an overdraft, you have blood pressure. You find yourself not having a sleep, sleepless night because you are worried, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? You know, the Bible says the hidden worry about that. So what is it that I'm saying? Live by faith. Decree and declare, I shall not be hungry in my house. I shall not be thrown out because of a house rent. Because Jehovah child, my provider, is grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. Live by faith, not by sight. The redefined Christian is living by faith, not by sight. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you want to look around and start to say, oh my, I have so many years, I've not yet gotten a wife. You know, and it becomes a worry to you. You worry until your cows come home. And you not change anything. I'm here to announce to you that the Lord will give you good gifts. You open your eyes and send you a God-fearing woman whom you marry as long as you call on him. Live by faith, not by sight. Just stop wasting time calculating 
the number of your years. The Lord doesn't consider the years for you to get married as a man or a woman. I'm not saying that you ignore relationships until you are old. I'm only saying live by faith, not by sight. Worry over nothing. Seek his kingdom. Praise God. And everything else shall be following. But brethren are here to encourage us. We are at a time that we must be redefined. We reposition ourselves and say, I have now redefined how I have been looking at my relationship with God. Buana Yesu as if you were son. People who live by faith who believe God, they are never ashamed. When you believe and you trust him, when he knows that you have faith in him, you shall never be disappointed. Faith never disappoints. Second Chronicles 20, 20. The, you can read it also at home. The Bible talks about one man, and it's a whole story of Second Chronicles. Then towards the end at 20, verse 20, the redefined Christian is described there. You believe God, have faith in him, amen. When you believe him, glory to the living God, Praise God, you shall be established. Buana as if you were son. I faith in God. He is the source of everything. Believe also in his servants, in his prophet, true prophets, not just any other, and you prosper. Buana as if you were son. The divine Christian knows there is nothing that is impossible with God. That's what it means to live by faith. It's when you wake up one morning and you notice. The things are not as you expected. You invested expecting a deal. You got the losses. I'm here to announce to you. Is there anything impossible with our God? Nothing. That's when you shake yourself up and you say, you know what? Business, you are not going to put me down. I speak unto you. Receive life again. In the name of Jesus. You dry bones like Ezekiel's. Ezekiel's utterance should encourage every believer. Start to prophesy and to say, receive life again, you business. Arise again because we are pressing on. You are not closing down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Buana as if you were son. So I have faith in God. Amen. Amen. So a redefined Christian who will have faith in God, who will believe God for everything. And I'm assuring you, Jesus will say that when you believe him, we have faith in him. Signs, wonders, and miracles will keep following us. It's not us that shall be searching for signs and wonders. But when we have faith in our God, when we believe in him, he will cause signs and wonders to keep following us. Don't miss the service that we will be having a time of testimonies. I've had moments to listen to brethren in the church. They have called me from far and wide, sharing awesome testimonies. And as we go along, we'll be publishing some of those testimonies in the TTM newsletter. You have not registered, check our website. Register so that you can benefit from the free newsletter that comes every week. So we'll be sharing some of the testimonies with the permission of the owner of the testimony. Praise the Lord. I'm saying this because I have seen people who have lived by faith. I have had people who are for sure had a visitation of God. So the divine Christian, it's time to walk by faith and not by sight. I pray for you that may time come when you never leave the presence of God. Amen? May this be your time that you never leave the presence of God. May this be your time that you forever live by faith. May this be your time that you focus on the order and finisher of your faith. May this be that time that you focus on the mark of your victory and forget the past. Let this be your time, my fellow Christian believer, as we press on to the mark in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm here to say this, that a Christian who is redefined deliberately makes a choice to live by this. Neno litasimama. Ya wulimwengu ya tapita, lakini neno litasimama. This word is forever established. And the Lord watches of what he has spoken that he may accomplish his word. Because his word is power, his word is life. It can never be contradicted, this word. 
This one has changed my life. This one has changed the life of many. So if you are a Christian who has decided to walk in a very special way with the Lord, that is in the new meaning, understanding yourself in God. You know God doesn't change. It's about us understanding our position in God. Praise the Lord. When you get to understand who you are in God, you become redefined and this war will turn your life 360 degrees. Amen? I am nothing but what this word has said. All what you will ever need in life, it is in this word. All what you are and you will ever be, it is here. Praise the Lord. I'm here to announce to us, time has come as a redefined Christian. Love the word of God. Love what God has said. Love the word. Amen. Wake up every morning and say, this word, it is my life. The Bible says that we are going to check that because it's important. Joshua 1 and verse 8, a very common verse. We will only look at that as we get along. We are approaching towards a moment when we will conclude. Joshua 1 and 8, we are talking about the redefined Christian. A Christian when he ameamua musimamo wake dani ya Christo. Na mkristo mwenye alia mwa musimamo wake. Na kristo bas uwanga anashika neno kwa maaki. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Joshua 1 and verse 8. The Bible says, this book of the law, this one. Amen. Let the word of God never cease from you. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do it. Buana as a viewer, sir. Let's dwell a bit on that verse while you're looking at it on the screen. You know? When God was commanding, when God was commanding Joshua, that the word of the law, his word will never cease from his mouth. You know, when God was commanding Joshua with his word, he said, you shall meditate in, in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall have good, no, for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Praise the Lord. Some people take too long to look for success. I'm not saying you don't read motivational books, but sometimes we take too long searching for the principles that will take you to success. The key principle has already been redefined for us or given clearly. Joshua 1.8, the Bible is telling us, do you want good success? Do you want a prosperous life? Then this is what you need to do, my fellow Christian believer. This is what you need to do every other moment that the word shall not depart out of your mouth. When the Bible says out of your mouth, it is mouth. Amen? It is mouth. Mouth is mouth. Praise God. Meaning, I speak it. I verbalize it. So when I'm reading, instead of even reading quietly, let me read loudly. Amen? Let me shout it. Let me speak it. Praise God. When I'm praying, let me speak this word. The Bible talks about you shall meditate on it day and night. That means your heart will take time as a divine Christian to concentrate on what is this word saying that is the Christian that is succeeding in the time that we are in. That's the Christian that is prospering in our time. Buana Yesu as if you son. This is a message of self-reflection. This is a message of self-examination so that we can become what God wants us to be. So that we do what he wants us to do. So that we be a people of influence. We are looking for success. We are looking for prosperity. The key is right here in this word. Take this word. Believe it. Meditate on it. Speak it. And I'm telling you, ask God and ask me if it doesn't work for you. God is not a respecter of person. It has worked for me. It has worked for so many people that I know. Why would it work for you? When you pick it, you meditate on it and you speak it. When it's upon the marriage that you have, speak the word upon it. Amen? 
You stand and say, Lord, you hate the divorce. This wife that you gave me, I declare she's going nowhere. She's mine. And she's a good gift from the Lord. And I proclaim in Jesus' name, she's a blessing in my life. Praise God. Amen. Pick what the word is saying about that sickness. I declare by the strength of Jesus, I am healed. If you're single, you want to get married. Start to say, the Lord has said, none will lack their mates. Praise God. Wheresoever the man is, start now leaving your parents. Wheresoever the girl is, must start leaving the parents so that I locate you and we become one. Amen. Praise God. I'm talking about that Christian that will pick this one and give it a real meaning. Speak it one as if you were son. The Bible says they learn to meditate on it, believe it and speak it, and do it. Hallelujah. Whatever this word says, do, do. Amen. If it says do not despise the fellowship of believers, then don't stay at home when others are in the church. Because the churches have been opened. It's not like before when we could not gather. Now we have the permission. As long as someone is six years and above, but not above 65 years. As long as we are sitting the way we are spaced right today, and we all have our masks, and we are being tested at the gate. What's the big deal? The Lord has allowed us to gather again. Why are you away? The Bible has told us, don't stay away. Praise the Lord. Pick this one. If you want to be the divine Christian that has a victory in our time. Amen? Amen? That Jesus Christ will fight you a strong one. Mm -mm. You'll not be left when he comes. He'll carry you home with the Father, to the Father. Bwana Yesu as if you were son. I'm sure someone is getting this word. That is the redefined Christian. You cannot stay away from this word. And that is what he also continues to say in sub chapter 1 and verse 2. He commands, you can read that at home. He commands that you meditate on this word. Avoid staying in the council of the wicked. Pick this word. Meditate on it. And the Bible promises us that the moment that you pick this word, you meditate on it, then you shall be like a tree. Hallelujah. That bears fruit all year round. It is of what is happening in Kenya and in the world. You will bear fruit all year round. Why? Because you are picking the word, you are meditating on it, you are doing what it says the Bible to cause you. You will be like a tree that is planted by the riverside, bearing fruit all year round. When everyone is saying things are not working, you will be saying thank you Lord Jesus. I stand to honor God. That while we have continued on this year, the Lord has blessed us. In the midst of famine, so to say, that which was being called a famine time of economy, the Lord is when he's blessed us to have the construction of the church completed. Isn't he awesome? You bear fruit when it is unexpected. We've got people that support it, people that came, whichever amount, the Lord knows, and he is a reward, I praise the Lord. And that's why you can see the sanctuary was done. That's why you can see we have the washroom. That's why you can see we have the, the, the offices. Buana Yesu as if you were son. I'm encouraging somebody. You will bear fruit when you pick this word and you make it your friend. Praise be to the living God. Hallelujah. The redefined Christian is not that one who goes to only want to hear what will make you excited. That when I tell you it's good to, 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 to read the word or to pray, you start to say, oh man, see you just, just say I'm blessed. I will say you are blessed and for sure you are blessed. Much more than that, look for what the spirit of the Lord is saying, not what the itching ears are saying. Paul was telling Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 3, that a time is coming when many people will not want to hear the truth, but they want to hear what their itching ears want. May God help us. That even when we are being told, correct your ways and repent, when you are told, oh, give, it is okay. Amen? As long as it is the truth and the word of God. That is the Christian that I'm talking about. I'm excited about this word because it works. It has worked for me, it will work for you. Glory to God. 
We continue and we are saying this. That redefined Christian in our time wakes up and praises the Lord. You are a prisoner of the living God. Irrespective of the circumstances, you are praising the Lord. I praise you in the morning. I praise you in the noon time. I praise you when the sun goes down. You are my maker. I worship you. I honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is the redefined Christian who chooses to praise the Lord, not because of the circumstances, but because of who God is. Hallelujah. Amen. And even when you don't feel like you can praise, it's not what you feel. We are saying it is by faith. Pick what you are saying in a psalm. Like someone called me some time back and said, Mom, I'm not able to pray. I said, do this. Pick Psalm 135, 145, and go reading it up to 150. And by the end of it, all she said, oh, now I'm praying like I don't know what. Praise God. Hallelujah. Learn to pick a praise unto your God. If you can sing, sing in your bathroom. Sing when you are working. Sing when you are cleaning utensils. Worship the Lord from your heart. Praise the Lord. That is the Christian that we are talking about. God is delighted by your praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Morning, noon, evening, give him a praise. Praise the Lord. All the time, give him a praise. Hallelujah. The redefined Christian is worshipping the Lord in truth and in the spirit. At your time, you can read John 4, 23 to 24. Because as a redefined Christian, you must now know time has come to worship the Father in truth and in the spirit. With a kind of worship that is from the heart, not from the mouth. So the way we sang before, the way we danced before, it's going to be different now. The Spirit of the Lord is the one who will lead us and what he wants us to see. And what he wants us to say. Praise be to the living God. That is the redefined Christian. The redefined Christian. That is the one who will be picking like Ephesians 5.19. They say that you must make sure you are speaking to one another with the Psalms. Zaburi di unaongele. Mutu wa kikuri shabari ya leo. Kuna mwambia mimi niko salama nime barikiwa sana na yesu. Nime induliwa na ninaeka pikuni. Wala asibiwe sana. That is a redefined Christian who praises even through greeting on the phone. Amen. When you meet a friend there and they are greeting you, you are saying, Oh, mimi ni kopoa, ni manashukuru, ni meokoka, yesu ni buwana, ame inuriwa na ame ni inua. Hallelujah. You are praising the Lord to one another through praises, through some, hallelujah, through hymns, through spiritual songs. Amen. That is a redefined Christian. I don't know how many I have here. I know you are there. Redefined Christian. Making a decision from today. That you must give you a new meaning to the way you walk with your God. Pwana asibiwe Psalm. Psalm 34 1. We can check on that. Sapuri 34 1. We are approaching towards the end. Maybe I'll mention one more point, and that will be the end of today's sermon about a redefined Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 1. The Bible says that his prayer shall not cease from my mouth. I think that's what it is saying. Psalm 34, verse 1. I know you're there. The psalmist is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Praise be to God. His praise shall be beware continually in my mouth. Praise God. So very divine Christian, that Christian that is strong, that is powerful, that has made a decision, that you're not turning back, make sure that the praise of the Lord is continually in your mouth. The Bible continues to say, and you can read at home, Psalm 100 and verse 4, that you enter his presence with thanksgiving. Stay in his courts with a lot of praise. Hallelujah. We are not of those that praise the Lord with the mouth. We worship and praise him from our heart. Matthew 15 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Finally, brethren, the redefined Christian is the one who is always praying. Hallelujah. If there be a time that I have enjoyed prayer, it is over the time that we had the lockdown. Because even though we were having the online service, the moment we finish the service in the, 
at 11 online, I get to pray. Or even at night, I get to pray because I'm working from the house, so I'm not chasing the traffic. You know? So every morning is to wake up and pray. In the night, you pray. Praise the Lord. It's been an awesome moment of prayer, and I know a number of us would come. But they were praying at three, God said this. Another one says, I was praying at 4.30, the Lord said this. In the night, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many people even formed groups, and they bought Airtel, which I hear is free. And they were able to call each other and pray online, my friends. You know, a time has come that we must be Christian that will choose to speak to the Father. Amen. When we call on the Lord, we are never put to shame. First Thessalonians 5, we are not going to read it because our time is remaining three minutes and we are coming to a close for the sake of those who are online before we get to the second service. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Pray without ceasing all the time. Just keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. The benefit of prayer is that you retain your fellowship and relationship with God. God has all the authority and permission to bring everything you need when you're just seated and doing nothing. He can do it. But why he wants us to ask? Why he wants us to seek? Why he wants us to knock? Why he wants us to call on him to seek him? It's because he is interested with, with the relationship, fellowship with you. He loves you so much, he just doesn't want to wake up every morning like a distributor and drop bread and go. He doesn't want just to bring a shoe and say, take, and then he goes. No! He wants you to keep speaking to one another. Father, I believe you for this shoe. Lord, I thank you because you are the giver of car, and I receive a car in God. Hallelujah! As Christian believers who are following after God, time has come that we purpose. You know, we purpose like the singer said when I quoted it and I said, I've made my mind, I've got my mind made up. And I would turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye, goodbye world. I'm no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Amen. Praise be to the living God. So the third divine Christian is so determined to do what God wants them to do. Buana as if you were sad. If you do that, my brother, my sister, these are like eight keys, or they are nine. I do not know whether they were eight or nine. You enter the month of September with such a birthday. Amen. Amen. We are entering a month of September with such a birthday. Hold these principles so dearly to your heart. Amen. Amen. Hold the principles dearly to your heart. Buana yes, you as if you were sad. In summary, what we have said today and what we were learning last Sunday is these key highlights, nine of them starting for each month so that when you are battling divine purpose of God in the month of September, you'll be rejoicing. Why? Because as a divine Christian, there will be fruitfulness. Buana as if you were son. In the interest of time, I'm not able to go through all these key highlights, but there are nine of them. Amen. Live wisely. Amen. And I pray that you will live wisely. I pray that you live discerning the will of the living God. When you discern the will of the living God, you shall enjoy forevermore. Live as a Christian who seeks, you know, things that are above, not things that are below. Live as a believer who is always forgetting the past, pressing on to the mark. Don't be held back by what is a nini. Focus on where you are going because there is a mark of Christ ahead of you. Live as a Christian who has denied themselves, taken the cross of Jesus, and they are moving on. Live that life of a Christian, of one who dwells in the presence of God. Live that life of a Christian believer who walks by faith, not by sight. Live that kind of a life that makes you meditate on the word of God day and night. Live that kind of a life where you praise the Lord 24-7. Finally, live that kind of a life where you pray without ceasing. When you adhere to these nine principles, you will thank me and you glorify God. Amen? Amen. They have worked for me. 
They have worked for many more people, I know. They have worked for you who have been listening and those that are in the sanctuary. And you've got a testimony that we shall continue sharing. God bless you so much. We have come to that end of the service. And I know the spirit of the living God has ministered to our hearts. I declare this word is sealed into our spirit and no one can steal it. It will bear fruits, fruits that will last. And the Lord will help you to continue meditating on what he has been speaking to us today. Glory be to the living God. Allow us now to pause there so that we part with the online service viewers before we come to the other service. Just keep still, the Lord is with us. I am sure you have enjoyed today's message. Thank you very much for being with us. And I know God will enable you to remain a redefined Christian. God do you good. We'll connect again next Sunday. Thank you very much. You are blessed. Enjoy a very fruitful week and a blessed time in the presence of God all day. Thank you.